Falcons by the score of six to nothing. With Joe Theismann, I'm Jack Buck. We're at Candlestick Park. A lovely day, 60,000. And a kickoff went to the 49ers who are playing. Joe Montana hasn't thrown yet. They return the kickoff to their 30, and they're now at the Cardinal 37 with uh, their second first down of the first quarter. Yeah, but they've run the ball four times, Jack, and I'll guarantee you Joe Montana is itching to put the ball in the air. He also mentioned to me, I may just audibleize if Bill doesn't give me a chance to throw it. Mike Wilson is in motion. And I'll give to Cribs, outside, inside, good speed. He loves to go outside. He went to the 30, and he got about seven yards before Cedric Mack tackled him, and they are tearing up the St. Louis defense. Well, Joe Cribs finally is feeling his, his way in the secondary. There you see the offense. Now they'll run a sweep to the right of your screen, and it's just the old classic Green Bay sweep for any better reference. You see Cribs turn it up inside, gets a fine block by Cross, makes his turn and picks up seven, eight yards. And Montana still has not thrown. Jerry Rice and Dwight Clark are the receivers, second and three. really doesn't run the inside quite like he runs when he's going outside. No, he's a classic outside runner. You know, he's not the big kind of he's not the big kind of back that's going to bowl people over. He's got to find a crease and get through it. He's much more productive outside. And they just dumped Wendell Tyler, the veteran, they waved him. They did let him go, and a lot of that had to do with the productivity of Joe Cribbs. And they think that Cribbs is ready now to uh, really get into the 49er offense. He's out. And they use the two tight ends on third and one. Russ Francis and John Frank. Third and one. Cardinal 29. First pass, Montana. And incomplete. Now, he could have run for it, but perhaps a little something in his mind told him not to. He's angry at himself. Well, he could I, have run for the first down. What happens? I feel like that uh, Dwight Clark didn't quite take the ball. And there he sees he's looking, he's looking. He says, no, I'm, no, I'm going to throw it. Wisdom. That's a veteran quarterback. Now the fan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now the fans here wanting them to go for it, but instead they're going to try a long field goal with Ray Worshing, who has missed five out of his last eight attempts, and this is going to be a 47-yard try. He's 12 out of 19, but he is cold as can be. He's been in a rut lately. Moraski holding the ball, got it down. It's long enough. Three to nothing. 49ers. Well, they kept the ball for four minutes and six seconds. Walked right on down the field with the running attack. 0 for 1 in passing. And jump out in front by the score of 3 to nothing. That's the way you break out of a rut. You know, he kicked a 50-yarder last week, which, you know, it seems like the, if you're going to get out of a rut, you kick a 25 or 30-yard field goal. He's been kicking 50s, and now this one to get himself back on track. He had a conversation with Fred Von Appen, who's a special team coach of the 49ers, and he just said, look, don't feel, don't get negative, don't get down on yourself, just let things happen. You go through these things and, and let it happen. You know, kickers are special people anyway. They don't really... Uh, function like football players. They just function in another world most of the time. <laughs> Wershing is one of the many. There's Cliff Stout along the sideline waiting to go to work. Wershing is one of the many on this field who were born outside of the continental United States. Wershing is from Austria. You see what Cliff Stout has done thus far this year. And he started the second half last week against the Eagles. Wershing will kick it off and the deep men are by Sikahema and Eric Swanson, and that's a pretty good one-two punch. By the way, at that end of the field, it's very tough to feel the fly ball. The sun is right directly in their eyes. You can see the shadows as they move down the field. It's going to be a little bit difficult to see. And coming out with it is Sikahema. And the 49ers did a good job of shutting him down near the 21-yard line. There's Stout. Tom Rathman made that tackle. Here's the defense of the 49ers. They use a three-man front. Carter is out of the middle, so they're using Stover, Tuiasa Sopo, and Dwayne Board. Milt McCall, Ricky Ellison, Tim Fonhorst, and Keena Turner are the linebackers. They're also without Ronnie Lott. And their backfield, a couple of rookies, Tim McHire and Don Griffin, Carlton Williamson, the veteran, and Tom Holmo playing in place of Ronnie Lott. 
That's Bill Ring, who just got back to work for the 49ers after an injury. He was shaken up on that kickoff. We'll tell you a story about him in a little bit of how he made this football team at one of the gong show tryout camps with about 5,000 people on the football He's team. He's the only one that made it, right? He's the only one. Bill Walsh walked up and he said, uh, who's that blonde-headed guy in the corner? And they said, sign him. So they did. The Cardinals are at their 21. Let's see how they come out with Mitchell and Farrell. Tight end Marsh on the right side. And a delay to Mitchell coming right. And he got about five or six yards. Now, Mitchell told us last night, this is the first time he really felt whole all year long. He just got it six yards, tackled by Fonhorst and McHire. Here's the lineup for the Cardinals with Stout, Mitchell, and Farrell. Roy Green, J.T. Smith, the wide receivers. We have a change with Gene Chilton at the left guard in place of Kennard. So it's Sharp, Chilton, Clark, Bostick, Smith, and the tight end is Doug Marsh. And second down for the Cardinals on a good run by Mitchell as both teams are matching strength. There's Gene Stallings. He said, we've got to score 24, 26 points to win this game. Well, they realize that the best defense they can have is trying to keep that San Francisco offense off the field. You saw the first drive that went down and got a field goal. They feel like with Joe Montana in the football game, San Francisco's offense is much different than it's been in previous weeks. Ball at the 28. Second down and a couple. Mitchell, oh, he had good feet going for him that time, and he's very close to a first down. Dwayne Board made the tackle. He got four yards in the first down. He kept those feet moving, Joseph. Well, you know, Stump is, is a real special back. I know when we played against him and I played a, as a part of the Washington Redskins, we always feared Stump Mitchell more than anybody because he's so versatile. And you think you have him tackled, and all of a sudden he squirts out for another four or five yards or breaks a big one down the field. Three to nothing in favor of the 49ers, and the Cardinals get a first down at their 32. Marsh on the right side. Mitchell again. Farrell a good block. Linebacker was shooting in there, Ellison, and he missed him. And the other linebacker, Walter Michael, made the tackle. A good for three. On the sideline, Lomax benched in the second half last week. He had started 52 in a row. That was the longest string of all the quarterbacks in the league, but he's only looking today. I talked to Neil last night. He said he had his worst night's sleep since he's been in the National Football League last night. He just, uh, he doesn't feel good about it. It's not a good feeling, but sometimes the change settles you down and gives you a chance to look at the game from a different view, and it can help him ultimately in the long run and the Cardinals. And timeout is called by St. Louis. Well, that's something you don't like to do early in the game, waste the time out of that sort. Look at that. Yeah, Look Gene's at the not, reaction of Gene Stallings. Well, you know, he's not happy. You're, you know, you're, goodness me, 8.45 to go in the first quarter. You've already used up one of your timeouts. You want to save him towards the end of the half. But I have to sort of agree with the quarterback that will call it in this situation. You've got sort of a drive going. The 49ers have scored. You don't want to take a, a, a back seat and lose something. They've just given the final score here on the PA system of New Orleans beating the Rams, making the Ram record 7-3. And putting the 49ers in a good striking position, there's another final. New England defeated Indianapolis. You know, what's funny about that is the fans always cheer when they see the score. <laughs> well, uh, Gene Sheldon, who started at the left guard, is out of there now. It's second down and eight. And a very good catch by the... Wide receiver J.T. Smith, he avoided a tackle, slipped underneath it. Boy, he's been playing well. 17 yards. McHire, the rookie, had him and lost him. There you see at the bottom part of your screen, J.T. Smith, the 49ers are going to go after Cliff Stout. They want to blitz him, which means it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now, Smith makes a nice move, nice catch. He's a great hand catcher. Ducks in, picks up a few more yards. He's finally healthy for the first time this year as well. First down at the 49er, 49. Bernard is in there at the left guard despite an injury himself. Short drop and a bad throw. He tried to get it out to Roy Green, and a flag is down. That's the first flag of the day. And a procedure call against St. Louis. They went on a quick snap, and that happens frequently. Well, it not only happens, but it's the one, one of the things that has, have plagued the St. Louis Cardinals all year. They're the most penalized team in the National Football League, and it isn't necessarily the fact that they've had people hurt that's caused them to lose football games, but they keep making mental mistakes, and they are mental Medical mistakes position. when you have too many penalties. Six men on the line. The penalty is declined. It's second down and ten. You must have at least seven men on the line of scrimmage. 
Well, the Bears knocked off Tampa Bay. And we'll have all those finals for you. We'll give them to you in order as we get along here. Second down and 10, the penalty declined as the referee said. Declined. He's still with the referees are from. That was John Dooley. Second and 10. Marsh on the right side, green in motion. Little screen out there. And uh, not much doing. Roy Green tried to throw a block, and he couldn't. J.T. Smith caught the ball for short yards. And it is third down coming up. It's 3 nothing, 49ers. We're in the first quarter, 7.45 left. That makes a big difference. See that quarterback with that full spinner. You have the defensive players going in all different directions. It really does. As a matter of fact, when you throw that quick screen to the left, it's always easier throwing the left because your momentum and your timing is set up. And, and for some reason, it just became more comfortable for me, and it looks like Stout handled it real well. Troy Johnson, the third wide receiver for St. Louis on third down and four. Plenty of time. And it's not a first down. It is not a first down. They were right on top of Roy Green. It is fourth down. He was double covered, and Torrey Nixon, the extra back, made the tackle. It's fourth down for St. Louis. Seven minutes left in the quarter. We welcome those of you who saw the Bears sack the Buccaneers five times and win the game 23 to 3. We're at Candlestick Park and we have a punt coming up from Greg Cater. We have 640 left in the first quarter. San Francisco leads the Cardinals 3 to nothing. Don Griffin, the rookie, is back. It's pumped high in the air and inside the five and a Cardinal bounce and it's down near the five, near the four-yard line. So the 49ers get the ball for the second time today, and they lead three to nothing. They're at their six. Listen to the heartbeat of America. When you have a style all your own, put yourself in today's Chevy Spectrum and listen to your heartbeat. The heartbeat of Joe Theismann, Jack Buck with you. Joe Montana is 0 for 1 in the throwing department. What do you think of Stout on his first possession? I thought he had real control of himself. I felt like they, they wanted to run the football. I think they're going to have to throw the football uh, if they're going to beat San Francisco. I, and I feel like Jim Schaaf and his coaching staff feels that way. They're probably going to have to go up deep because San Francisco blitzes a lot and plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Talk about blitzing. Nobody blitzes any more than the Cardinals. You're right. Days. They bring them all the time. We and talked to Bill Walsh yesterday, and he said that's the one thing that concerned them more than anything, especially with Joe coming back. And they don't blitz to stop the run. They blitz to get the quarterback. That's exactly right. The ball's at the six. Craig and Cribs in the backfield. Good fake. A flag is down. Jerry Rice went up and caught the ball. A flag is down. It's going to be offside against St. Louis. The play's going to stand, and then you're going to hear a roar from this crowd. Offside against St. Louis. You're right, Joe. In the package, bro, at 6'2", 200 pounds. And he went up high and caught it despite the coverage. 52, defense, offside. The call was against Charlie Baker in a 27-yard pass. San Francisco, 33. John Frank, the tight end. Wilson in motion. Here comes Krebs. Look at those blocks. Look at him go. The ball is at the Cardinal 48 on a big run by Joe Krebs, a former Buffalo player, and Al Baker had to catch him. That was something else that Gene Stallings talked about. Because his defense blitzes a lot, he holds his breath every time a running back breaks into the clear, and this is the reason why. There goes Randy Cross around. John, John Ayers leading it. Joe Krebs does a nice job stepping over Randy after he throws the block and picking up the additional yardage. You know, they've uh, they've been climbing on the offensive line, and they've been criticizing them. Uh, Cribs a little shaken up, by the way. But without Montana, everything breaks down. Well, I, you have to understand the San Francisco running game is predicated on the success of their passing game. They've not been as effective throwing the football, and it, it trickled on down to their running game. Looks like they have everything uh, in sync now. Ball at the 48. Rice in motion. Here comes Craig. 
Cardinals covered it very, very well. It was knocked in by Freddie Joan Nunn, and then he got the help that he needed. That's uh, eight weeks ago, Joe Montana uh, played his first game, then he was operated on. On the left is the uh, picture of the lower spine, and that's the area where a disc was removed, a herniated disc. Now, don't be afraid that you're going to see a man paralyzed for life out here if he is injured, because that's not the case at all. No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, Joe had two disc problems. One had been dormant, not a problem, but this herniation created a lot more pain, so they had to fix it. Derek Harmon checks into the backfield, number 24, second down. There he is. There's a flag down, folks. There's a flag down. But it's against St. Louis. That's a touchdown. He ran right away from Lionel Washington. There's Jerry Rice. That is his 10th touchdown pass of the year. And there's Montana. The old war horse is back to work. Yeah, the old war horse, 30 years old, old as old as the father time. <laughs> he just gets man-to-man -man coverage, and it's isolation with Jerry Rice going down the field. That's what they hope for. If you're going to blitz, you're going to have to cover him. If you don't cover him, you wind up chasing people down the field. There was a personal foul against St. Louis, and of course was declined in the touchdown counts. And Ray Wershing, who is 25 out of 25, will try to make it 10 to nothing. And he does. Into nothing and a roaring start for San Francisco. Phone call from his wife, I guess. The touchdown pass was very important. Of course, the reception by Rice was important. But more importantly, Joe Montana took his first hit. There you see him set in the pocket. Charlie sure. Baker's coming around. He's got him. And he puts him down gingerly. And there's Rice. That's the end result of what you saw. And there's the touchdown. Number Lionel 48 Washington. is Lionel Washington. And there's Montana bouncing back up, clapping his hands. Now they apply the penalty and the kickoff from the 50. And I've seen teams try an onside kick when they're kicking from the 50-yard line. They would, but I don't think 49ers are going to do it here. They just want to keep the uh, Cardinals deep in the hole. Wershing knocks it through the goalposts. Now a little to the left. Wide left. So the Cardinals will get the ball for the second time. And this crowd is alive. The 49ers are alive with a record of five and three and one. They used uh, Jeff Kemp. He played very well. And then he got hurt. And then they used Morosky. And they weren't playing well at all with Morosky. So they needed Montana back. Let's talk about Cliff Stout. With the Steelers, he sat on the bench. He played behind a very good one in Terry Bradshaw. Went to the USFL and played better there than he did in the NFL. You know, so the question is, is he better now than he was? Well, I don't think so. I think the time off, I think he's a good quarterback, but I think the time off definitely hurts. He's been out 15 months. This is his first start and his first opportunity. It's going to take a little while for him to get into the groove. Mitchell and Farrell in the backfield. Green in motion. Here comes Mitchell, and he made a good cut to get a yard. Jim Fonhorse, the linebacker, 55, got over and got him. There are two brothers on this team. Fonhorse, one on defense, one on offense. The Jets defeated Atlanta 28 to 14. And the Jets have a record of 9 and 1. And Buffalo over Pittsburgh, 16 to 12. Under the new Buffalo coach, Marv Levy. Marv Levy. Second and nine for the Cardinals. Smith and Roy Green are to the left, second and nine. Outside to Smith. Boy, he is a clutch receiver, isn't he? That's the first down. He just doesn't drop the ball. That's no, 13 he... yards with the rookie Don Griffin covering. Well, the thing is, is all through the beginning of the year, the first nine football games, actually first eight football games, he's been the only receiver the Cardinals have had. Not just a receiver, but the only receiver with some rookies coming in. Now he's got Roy Green back to take a little bit of pressure so they can't double up on J.T. Smith and gives him a chance to work one-on-one. -on -one. That time he did it against Don Griffin. You hear the crowd reaction, the PA and Archie's giving them scores of other games. That's what that's all about. Meanwhile, first down. Earl Farrell for the first time, and 
He wished somebody else had carried it. That Farrell, by the way, is having a very good year. He really is. He's got 33 receptions, got 349 yards rushing. He has really come into his own with O.J. Anderson moving on. He has a lot more playing time with, uh, with Stump Mitchell. And they're doing Cardinals good. caught a break today with Ronnie Lott on the sideline. This fellow already has uh, eight interceptions this year, and he's a brutal tackler and the team leader back there on defense, but he's on the sideline with a bad knee, second and eight. Well, he missed him, but Stout did a very good job of looking around and trying to find a target and threw into heavy coverage to J.T. Smith. He went all the way around the football field. He wanted to come to the right. He set, set, reset, swung all the way around to the left and put it out there. Got to give credit to that Cardinal offensive line. They've done a fine job protecting him. And believe me, the 49ers are going to throw a lot of pressure. The last two football games, they feel like they haven't put enough pressure on the quarterbacks or the offense. That's why they've fallen behind. It's third down and eight. Cardinals had to punt the first time they had the ball. The ball just did get to the quarterback. Made it look easy, didn't he? Out to midfield to J.T. Smith, despite the coverage of Tim McHire. Boy, that Smith is having a good day already. Oh, that's just great execution. Uh, Stout just muscled that one through the defenders. There you see J.T. at the bottom left of your screen. Similar pattern he caught before, except this time they're in zone coverage. You see the linebackers, and this is threading the needle, I want to tell you. He puts that up there. J.T. does a fine job going up for it. We have 310 left in the first quarter. Ball is at the San Francisco 49-yard line. First down, St. Louis. Mitchell looking. He can go. He can go. And he gets a first down run. So the Cardinals are not without hope despite the early 10 points by the 49ers. Carlton Williamson ran him out. That's a football team that's not going to quit. Here you get an opportunity to see the defense over pursue. From your right side, you see Ricky Ellison move in, Keena Turner get cut down, and there Stump cuts it back, makes the move on Carlton Williamson. Gets outside and turns. Now, here he's looking back, waiting for somebody. He's going to try and lull him to sleep. Boom, he gets out of bounds. Now, J.T. Smith's been catching the football, but here he is blocking on Donnie Griffin. Now it's going to be his chance to go out and try and block. First down at the 36 of the home team. And Stout threw it right in between the two. He, he underthrew J.T. Smith, then he overthrew... Roy Green. Roy Green was wide open. I guarantee he wants that one back. Who do you want to get it to, Green? He wanted to get it to Green on a crossing pattern. They, they feel like if they can run the play action into the line of scrimmage, get those linebackers to jump up on the play action bite, there's a voided area between the linebackers and the secondary for Green to cut in a lot. Green runs a lot of crossing patterns, and they feel like they can get the football to him inside in the middle. Wasn't a very good fake by Stout, was it? Well, you can't take a lot of time faking. I'll tell you a guy who's a great faker, though, is Montana. He's perfected it. Best one in football today. Backs in another area, and he runs with a ball, but they had that covered. There was a good defensive play by the linebacker coming in. Through all his confusion. And the flag is down. Well, through all his confusion, I think he got San Francisco to jump offside. Mr. Dooley says that's what it is. Offside San Francisco. Tom Dooley, the referee. Ed Fiffick is the umpire. Headlinesman Ed Marion. Defense. Second down. Vern Marshall is the line judge. Back judge Bob Moore. Side judge Gary Lane. And Bob Lewis is the field judge. That play is an audible. When Stout sees the defense go into what we use, the terminology of the 46 defense, which a lot of people are familiar with, they want to run that option play, an option off the defensive end. Two and a half left in the first quarter. 10 nothing, San Francisco. I don't know if I was the quarterback whether I'd call it or not, but... That's what they want to do. Second and five. Mitchell sliding outside, and McCall, the linebacker, tripped him up. That McCall's quite a package. He is 6'6", 230 pounds. A great Stanford uh, tradition with the McCall family. He's number 53. And you talk about a physical specimen. Pretty good linebacker. Well, he reminds you an awful lot of Ted Hendricks. Hendr Teddy Hendricks, who right. used to play uh, with the L.A. Rams. He's just a, or the L.A. Raiders, excuse me. He's just a big guy whose presence creates a problem, and his play even complicates it more. Third down and a long two for the Cardinals. Marsh is on the left side. He's the tight end. Look out. Look out. Stop. And that's good for a first down. Earl Farrell, a sure-handed fullback. 
know, Phil, you know, he's had 33 receptions coming in, and you have to be impressed with the way the Cardinals are using their play selection. They're running a lot of play action passes to take some of the heat off of the uh, pressure that they feel like the 49ers are going to put on the quarterback. 138 left in the first quarter. Clock is stopped. 10 nothing 49ers on a field goal by Ray Worshing of 47 yards and a pass Montana to Rice 45 yards. First down Cardinals. Let's listen. Boy, that was a good play by the linebacker who was down on the deck. Charles that was Haley. Haley, yeah. Oh, this one here, they love this guy. And you like him, too. I do, too. He, he plays out at James Madison uh, University where uh, Gary Clark went to school, a guy I played with. Now, here you see him just knife in, and he really loves to play football. There he takes on the blocker, makes a diving hit with that one big arm and brings Stump down. Yeah, he's 6'5", 230, and he has a big win, uh, wingspan, and he can move. He's got seven sacks already this year. They try and use him primarily on third down situations, but he's getting more playing time. He's in there now, second and ten. just a little bit behind Roy Green with tight coverage by the rookie Don Griffin from Middle Tennessee State the rookie Griffin and the ball was just a little bit behind by Stout he had a shot at him again this is a little bit of the rustiness of not playing there the ball you see hit just behind him Griffin knocking it down Roy Green running that post pattern there's the hole right there you want to try and get that dead area Roy tries to come back but he can't get to it and this for the 49ers, they had help on the way, didn't they? Yeah, they do. They'll yeah. always have help on the way. One of the hardest hitting football teams that I ever played against when I was playing. Torrey Nixon is the extra defensive back, number 20 for the 49ers on third and 10. They come. Blitz is on and trying to beat the blitz. It's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Got the ball downfield to Troy Johnson is a real flyer. Hasn't caught a ball for a touchdown yet. He didn't think he was out of bounds, but he was. Oh, yeah, but this is an excellent throw. There you see Stout just gets it in. He doesn't even have one foot down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he turns to the referee and says, what do you mean? Here's a field goal try by John Lee. Cardinal fans are aware of the problems he's had. After kicking 85 out of 100 in college, he's 7 out of 12 with the Cardinals. And this is a 38-yard try. The holder is Kent Austin. Cardinals trying to get on the board, and uh, they do. It makes it a 10-3 game. And we have 45 seconds left in the first quarter. It's been a very good first quarter, marked by the return of Joe Montana. 13 plays, 60 yards. It's important that they got some kind of point production out of that. Uh, you know, they get down 17 or 13 nothing, and then your confidence starts to dwindle a little bit. But now they're right in the football game. Their defense has got to feel like, okay, we've hit Montana. All the foo-foo's over. Let's go out and play football. Two Derricks are back there, Derek Harmon and Derek Crawford. And the kick by John Lee. Not deep at all. And uh, Harmon took it. Trying to get outside left and all down from behind. That doesn't say much for him. Carl Carter, who's a real good runner, made the tackle. We talked to Joe Montana earlier this week and his thoughts about coming back. Well, I didn't know whether I'd be back for the season or not, but uh, I, the thing that I talked about to my, with Jennifer and also my inner self was that I wanted to fight and push hard enough to, to try and come back at least this season. And if I didn't make it, I didn't make it. But uh, I wanted to at least give it an effort. I didn't want to sit out. It, I missed the game too much. He missed the game too much. Jennifer, by the way, his wife. She's the war department. Ball at the 21. First down. Uh-oh, that wide open. And good for about four yards to Roger Craig. He is tough to tackle one-on-one, -on -one, but a good tackle was made by Dennis Thurman. It was, and it appears wide open, but what happens is the Cardinals play that man-to-man -man tight defense, and he, the secondary closes so fast on the swing passes that you just, you know, all of a sudden it's something, and bang, it's gone. That's going to be the last play of the first quarter. We're counting down. And it was a field goal by Wershing, a touchdown pass to Rice, a field goal by Lee. And it's 10-3 in favor of the 49ers. 
They now have the ball at their 25 yard line, second and six. We start the second quarter, 10 to 3, in favor of the 49ers trying to win their sixth game of the year. And they have the ball at their own 25 yard line. Joe Theismann and Jack Buck with you. Jerry Rice comes to the left, and Cedric Mack has that tough job. Mack, this is an audible. And the fake to the fullback. And now Montana on the run and throwing on the run. And it is intercepted by Leonard Smith. And he is down at the 44-yard line of San Francisco. And Dwight Clark made the tackle, and a dejected Montana walks to the sideline. Well, he has disappointed himself. What it is, when he when he called the audible at the line of scrimmage, he was expecting man-to-man -man coverage. Here you'll see him make a play-action fake into the line of scrimmage and try and go to the... They fake there and try to go to the post. The Cardinals got back. Now he scrambles around. And again, I happen to think that, you know, Joe Montana... Another day he would have run. that, he probably would have run out of bounds. But you know, uh, he's trying to get the ball downfield. That's exactly what's going to happen until he gets a little more comfortable. Incredibly, that's only the fourth interception by St. Louis all year long and the first for Leonard Smith this year first down at the 44 of San Francisco it's the kind of situation where you can take a shot too. you get the ball back and there Flea it is flicker. there she is play flicker and screen he can't get it absolutely Tommy Holmo was covering number 46 See, coaches do that when you make a big play you want to get your team fired up so they run there was a particular play a flea flicker one thing is obvious here Joe Wherever Roy Green go, goes today, he's going to have plenty of company. Lots of company. I think that's the reason why you're going to see J.T. Smith be a very big part of the offense today. They're going to take they're going to take Roy Green out. There he is going down the middle. Stout does a nice job. Green does a nice job defending it, stopping the interception. Yeah, Stout didn't get it over his outside shoulder, did he? No, he didn't. Uh, again, I think looking back into that sun, it's hard to tell from looking at it on television, but that sun is definitely a problem when the ball gets up Could in the be. air. Second and ten. High formation with Farrell and Mitchell. Smith to the left and Green to the right. Big draw, screen pass. Look at there, somebody right in the middle of it. That was Manu Tuiasa Sopo. He's playing in place of Michael Carter. Now the Cardinals caught a break because when Carter is playing, it's a lot different than when this fellow is playing because yeah. Carter is number one. There he is along the sideline. Yeah, he's nursing a bad ankle, but I'll tell you something. With uh Manu Tuiasa Sopo in there. They don't really skip too much of a heartbeat. Michael Carter's a big guy, but Manu's played the position enough and does a great job handling the nose. He's listening to a little rock music as this game He's enjoying the game. That's part of the game of football. We gotta enjoy it. You don't see a screen pass lose yards like that very often. Third to 16. Torrey Nixon, the extra defensive back for San Francisco. Good protection to the sideline. Tough throw and a dandy catch by J.T. Smith for a first down. I got to tell you, I'm he, impressed with Cliff Stout's arm. I mean, he put that thing on a rope out there. And, of course, J.T. Smith, as I mentioned earlier, is healthy and moving the football. He just put that thing right out there on a string. You know, it's a, a gain of about 18 yards, but he had to throw the ball about 35 yards to get it. There. That's exactly right. You know, every, we talk about the depth of routes and the type of routes they're running, but the quarterback still throws from the middle of the football field most of the time. Cardinals are trying to go in for the tying touchdown here. Trailing 10 to 3. Second quarter. Mitchell finds some running room. Gene Chilton, by the way, back in at the left guard position. Williamson made that tackle in a five-yard gain. There is Arthur White, the man on the left. He's the doctor who operated on Joe Montana, and he said Montana's crazy to play. However, that doctor has two bad knees, and he runs 20 miles every day. <laughs> so, what do you know? <laughs> I tell you, there isn't a guy out there on the field I don't think it's crazy to play. The doctor said he operated on an Arab sheik this week, one nobody of the most important people in the world. He said nobody paid any attention. Nobody to cared. It. But Montana's different. Second and five. Good run by Mitchell that last trip. Now a whistle, and evidently the 30-second clock caught up to him, did it? Yes, it did. And again, that's something that's going to happen when you change quarterbacks. The layup game, number 18, second down. 
you know, when you when you can't find the 30 second clock, sometimes it's not the fact that um, Stout hasn't played a lot, but the fact is the terminology is not smooth coming out in the huddle, and that causes the delay. Sometimes you have to repeat things. Cardinals are the most penalized team in the National Football League. They started today with 66 penalties against them. Houston wins their second game of the year over their division rival Cincinnati, 32-28. Mitchell's off to the left and a draw to Farrell and a good tackle. That was a saving tackle on Farrell by the linebacker Ricky Ellison, number 50, two-yard game. San Francisco has a lot of people out, particularly on defense, about a half a dozen of their starters. Their nose guard Carter, the safety man Lott, the corner man Wright, who played at Missouri for you St. Louis people. And uh, Fuller, who's not a starter, but plays an awful lot. And Hardy, a good pass rush man. And Shell, a linebacker. Cardinals catch San Francisco crooked. They do catch him a little limping. Third and eight, and Troy Johnson is the third wide receiver for St. Louis. Look out, Cliff Stout. Fumble, and it is out of bounds, I think. I thought it was out of bounds. Now they're going to give it to San Francisco. The man behind Stout stripped the ball away. I thought that the man who recovered it had a part of his body out of bounds, which would have made the ball out of bounds, but evidently not for Keena Turner. Let's see. I agree with you. Here you see Stout scrambling to the left. And that gives you an idea how fast Keena Turner is. Cliff Stout can run. Now there, he just knocks the ball loose. Now the ball is in bounds. on the ground. Now, possession. See, now that man's out of bounds I when he touched you. the ball. I think. Oh. Tommy Holmo got it. And the 49ers have it at their 27. Stout never knew the man was there, or that close at least. Play will stand. That play was reviewed by the instant replays, and it's going to stand. Okay, good. First time I've been wrong today, outside of getting out of bed. 11.53 <laughs> left in the half. Ball at the 27 of San Francisco. Homo got the ball. Here comes Cribs. He doesn't like the middle, but he broke loose. Leonard Mitchell leaped on his back. Well, that play was designed to go a little bit further outside, but Joe Cribs, with that niftiness, cut it up right inside. When I say that Cribs doesn't like the middle, he, it's not a, he's afraid to run up in the middle, but he prefers to go outside. I'll tell you, interestingly enough, you know, Joe Cribs and Joe Washington, who used to play for the uh, Colts and for the Redskins, uh, are similar in size, actually. And uh, Joe Washington used to love to run inside, even though he was a little guy. Cribs prefers going outside. Second down and about four. Now here's Cribs outside, inside. And uh, quite close to a first down on that second down run. Tackled by David Galloway, 65. You talk about a good defender. And David Galloway played the early part of the year with an injury. He's their nose guard, a 280-pounder for St. Louis. He always has two men, sometimes three, blocking on him. Always. And you know, it's amazing. These nose tackles, Manu Tuyasa Sopo and David Galloway and people like that, they're built, they're born to be nose tackles. You know, they're not real tall, but they're real wide and have a great base. They're used to getting hit from all over, and they just have great hands and feet. They measure, and it is a first down. After recovering the fumble, 49ers are out to their 38. 10.50 left in the half. Tom Rathman is in the backfield now, number 44. Rather than Craig. Tom's a new father. Got a two-week-old little baby. Two tight ends. And Rathman is airborne and goes to the 40. Somebody popped him. That's Galloway, about whom we were just talking, number 65. It's Joe Cribbs that went and did a little somersault. There you see that nose, that position is the key to the 34 to try and control the center. There he gets his body right in front of Cribs and up and over. And the ball out to the 41. Francis is out and John Frank is the tight end. I saw Anthony Bell in on that tackle, the rookie. He's playing the inside linebacker position. Montana dumps it off, first down. Roger Craig.
42 yards, and Dennis Thurman caught up to him. Well, that was wide open, Joe. They knew what they were looking for. They sure did. Now, that's the way the San Francisco 49ers like to play football. Bill Walsh has got his plays written down. Here, you're going to see him in the right of your screen. Just check down in the middle. He beats the linebacker inside. It's just an option play. And now Craig turns on the speed, and he's got some speed, too. He's got a little bit of a hip problem. He might have run away from everybody here. The ball at the 19. And Thurman caught up with it. Rathman is in in place of Craig. Him. He'd stop Cribs right in his tracks. Now you say to yourself, why do the 49ers run a play like that? They run plays like that to set up the play action pass. Don't be surprised if you see a similar type of move by Joe Montana pivoting around and either a halfback or a wide receiver running a post or a corner pattern into the end zone. That's Jeff Kemp, number nine. He is sending in the plays. By the way, that tackle was made by Bob Clasby, number 79, the left defensive end for the Cardinals. Second and nine. All those signals mean something to somebody. I hope so. Otherwise, they put him away. Rice is in motion. There it is. Oh! Quite an effort to John Frank, the tight end. Coverage by Leonard Smith. Frank out of Ohio State, a, an exuberant player from the Pittsburgh area. Yep, there's John Smith. He's coming up. He fakes the block inside. John Frank, excuse me. Doesn't really put a move on Smith, and that's probably the reason why he wasn't a little if, more open. If he'd had a little more speed, it would have been wide open. Well, right? yeah, but you see, you've got to freeze the defensive back a little bit more. If he makes a little bit more of a move, he doesn't need as much speed to get open. It's one of the toughest things to teach is patience in a pass route. 8.23 left in the half. San Francisco has been fair on third down conversions. It's third and nine. to Dwight Clark, his buddy. And Montana was whacked down and comes back up. Let me tell you about these Cardinals. They said, we're not going to. And, and Gene Stallings talked to the team about unloading on Montana. He said, we're not going to do that. He said, but on the other hand, we are going to blitz and we're going to come after him. We're not going to try to hurt him, but we sure are going to tackle him. That's exactly right. If he has the football, he's fair game. If he lets go of the football, I've told my guys, hey, look, you know, you don't want to hit him with a cheap shot or a late shot. I think that's that's class on the part of the Cardinals. Wershing had a 47-yard field goal earlier. This is 35 yards. And it is good. So three more points for San Francisco, and that makes it 13-3. to three. We have 8-14 remaining. All of that after recovering the Cardinal fumble. 60,000 on a great day here in this lovely city. We have 8.14 left in the half. The 49ers are on top, 13 to 3. And Ray Worshing will kick it off. By Sikahema and Eric Swanson are deep. 49ers have covered their other kickoffs very well. Coming to it is Swanson. He can move. Now they cover the outside very well and trying to make a cut. He slipped down near the 20-yard line. On well, next Saturday, a doubleheader, college football. First down for Stout at the 20. And Farrell went for about four yards. Wayne Board made that tackle. Let's go all the way back to New York and Brent Musburger. Well, Jack, it's not as nice here as it is in that city by the bay, and the Giants have scored. Watch Joe Morris on the cutback, take it in against the Eagles. Incidentally, Jack, cheap shot at the end of this play. No room for that in the National Football League. Joe's okay, though. He's on the sideline. Let's go back to Jack Buck. There was a gain of about three yards on that last one. And the up Farrell is taken down hard by Tui Asasopo. By the way, that was the uh, Golden Gate Bridge earlier that we showed you rather than the Bay Bridge. Big bridge. The really big, bridge. big, big bridge. Third down coming up. Gene Stallings wonders how he's going to get this seven yards. You know, this is the kind of situation you just don't want to put yourself into because it's a must-throw situation. You heard the official along the sideline telling the 49er players to back away from the sideline. 
can't see why you back up too far. That's why you heard the whistle. They're down. Ample time and a comeback, but out of bounds. Try to get a Detroit Johnson coming back. They had it set up, and Johnson did the right thing, but the pass was out of bounds, and the Cardinals will have to punt. Well, their offense is not clicking as it did on the first two possessions. Well, you know, they didn't get a lot of yards on first or second down, which puts them in a third and long situation. And there probably isn't a tougher defense to try and convert third down against than the 49ers. Don Griffin, he is the number one punt returner. He's only a rookie out of Middle Tennessee State. He'll get a chance, perhaps, with Cater kicking the ball. Greg Cater, the second punt. Pretty good hang time. The coverage is not very tight, and a fair catch is called for. The 49ers, after a 43-yard punt, take over on their own 34. 631 left in the half, 13 to 3 in favor of the 49ers. Well, you know, the 49ers are doing exactly what they wanted to do. Bill Walsh was very concerned about the consistency of his offense or the lack of consistency in his offense prior to this football game, and he felt like having Joe Montana back will get him back to what they have to do. It's a short-range passing game that sets up the running game that gives you an opportunity to take big shots. That's exactly what they've gotten so far in this quarter, or in this game. 49ers have the ball at their own 34, first down. 6.31 left in the half. They lead the Cardinals 13-3. Craig and Rathman are in the backfield. Pretty good faking by Montana. How'd that man stay uncovered? Out there to Dwight Clark. He and, he and Montana are the best of friends. What does he think about Joe coming back? Uh, seems to be throwing it great. His arm's really strong, strong as it's ever been. Uh, maybe that's because he's been in the weight room a lot, working on his back. He, uh, he's, he's on time, most of the time. Uh, his reads are perfect. Just Sometimes the, the ball comes out of there funny, fluttering, and looks like a wounded duck. But uh, he'll, most of the time, 95% of the time, they're uh, right on time, right on the mind. Cribs gets a first down. The Cardinals are trying to tackle the ball. Dennis Thurman finished the playoff. Cribs almost lost that ball. And that'll take us to the six-minute mark. Thurman started today for Lonnie Young. That was a final score that delighted everybody here at Candlestick Park, and Minnesota continues to play very well, 24 to 10 over Detroit. And Washington had to come from behind to beat Green Bay, and the Bears won their game, 23 to 3 over Tampa Bay. First down call for Montana. A toss to Cribs. Well, it's nice when you can run, and it Dennis Thurman bumped him out. Oh, there's, three so yards. Many, there's so many things made of the passing or of the, of the passing game in football today and about quarterbacks being able to throw the football. But unless you can run a football, you just can't do the things you want to throwing it. And exactly the uh, 49ers ex are doing exactly what they want to do right now. And that's run the ball on the ground. But believe me, Joe Montana is an antsy quarterback. Bill Walsh is an antsy coach and they love to put the ball in the air. Lead by 10 at the moment. They put Roger Craig in there. Team up with Cribs. Tight end is Francis. And it is caught by Craig. Boy, he's a bundle. Isn't he 224 pounds. He can run. He gets a first down to the Cardinal 41. Freddie Joe Nunn trying to stay with him. You know, we talked to the offensive linemen this, this week with the 49ers. They really wanted to take care of Joe. They didn't want to be responsible. Now, look at that protection by Fawnhurst. Just, and Randy Cross. They're just not letting anybody near Joe. They have some experience up front. Buried don't they? right on the ground. Don't go near him. <laughs> now Rathman is back in there, number 44, a rookie out of Nebraska. Another audible. Now, how do I know that? Good fake. There he goes. the fake when he looked up and he saw rice one-on-one -on -one with Carl Carter 
boy, did he spring into action, and he unloaded it. I'm going to tell you something. There is not a better play-action quarterback that goes to hide in the ball in the National Football League than Joe Montana. Watch this fake into the line of scrimmage. Now, he's got everybody on the defense fold. He puts it up. Al Baker puts him down gently, and Jerry Rice just does the thing he's done all year long, and that's catch touchdown pass. That's number 11 for him on this season. Number 11 for him, and they say he's dropped about three or four that he could have caught for touchdowns. Worshing has been perfect on extra points all season. That's good. That makes it 20 to 3. And Montana is a happy, happy person. There's the doctor saying, well, we did good work. Montana let go of that touchdown pass. There you see the job Joe does of making that play action fake. Now he puts it up. He knows he's got Rice there. Now Baker puts him down. Wait, hold it. Very gently. Nice. And easy. then you know what he does? Let's watch and see what's going on. He turns and he sings Ebony oh. and Ivory. <laughs> Here's the kickoff to the Cardinals sick of him. A little alley. Nope. Closed in a hurry. Out to the 22. Tackled by Bill Ring. Next Sunday in the National Football League. That'll be a good game with the Bears playing and something done. Yeah, and the only way to. they're going to do that is put the football in the air. I think, uh, you know, they're down 17 points. Time to start putting it up. Four man rush. And a pass caught by Roy Green. For a first down. And we talked about that earlier. What they want to do is they want to run that play action faking to get the linebackers coming up. And then they run green in behind. It's a favorite pattern for the Cardinals. And with Stout having the arm he has, he can hit the holes in there. Green being healthy moves right in, makes the play. There's 21 yards. Cardinals punted, got a field goal, fumbled, and punted again. That's why they're down 20 to 3. First down at their 43. They got to give their defense a little bit of a break and get something going offensively. Marilyn Mitchell. And he avoids the sack for a moment. Tina Turner, number 58, was in on it. Tina Turner gets the sack, but you got to credit the secondary of the 49ers for making stout. He looked right, looked left, had to pull it down, and allowed the pursuit to get to him. That's the first sack. There you see Green up top, or J.T. Smith. Now there's the secondary people right in their hip pocket. They're just not going to give him a chance to throw it. Now that was what he saw on the right, and this is what he sees on the left. Roy Green trying to make the fade move, and there comes the pressure. It's a short three-step drop, and you've got to get rid of it or else get sacked. Well, Green had whipped his man, but Stout couldn't set up again, and it is second down and long. Over the middle for a few. Back out to the 45-yard line. Green putting on some moves. Williamson made the tackle. And the Cardinals ought to be able to work on this secondary without Lot. And with two rookies on the corner. Yeah, they really should. You know, you can't discount, though. McKayer and, and Griffin are two fine football players. Homo is an excellent safety. Of course, Carlton Williamson being the only one that's played uh, with consistency and as far as the games go back there. But I still feel like they're going to have to put the football in the air. I think that's what they're trying to do now. Third and eight, Troy Johnson, the third wide receiver. Good protection again. He needs a block to get a first down, and he got the first down, I think, by... Inches. I think he's short. I think he's short, Jack. Let's see where they put it down. I'm gonna see what happens here. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, disagree with you and say that he made it by inches as they bring it all the way across the field. No, I I'm just... gonna make you a bet. <laughs> I'm not a gambling man. Come on. <laughs> It was the rookie, McKayer, who tackled him. Now, I'll say this for Stout. He was trying to get all he could. He could. He was hesitant. Actually, what he tried to do is get him break up field. And then, you know, Cliff Stout's a heck of a runner. He's, Wait till uh, you see this, man. He made it by nah, half the distance, I, I, half the length of the ball. Got to be honest with you. I I'm don't think so. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I'm staking half my life on it. Half? <laughs> the half that's already gone. <laughs> I told you he made a first down. 321 left but, in the half. But by more than inches. <laughs> by, by a ball and a half there. That's a good run by Stout. I he thought he got he knocked out. 321 remaining in the half. A lot of offense. A lot of offense. Wide open game. Yes, it is. 
from 60 to 147 on total yards. Ball at the San Francisco 47. little pass and run by Mitchell and Earl Farrell was out in front trying to block for him six yards. Well this is all Mitchell now with uh, O.J. Anderson out of the scene and he told us last night that he really feels healthy for the first time all year. He really does you know and he's the kind of football player who just gets better and better as the game goes on. He's not real big but pound for pound, there isn't anybody tougher in the National Football League. He just hasn't caught the ball a lot. You know, he's only had 21 receptions coming into this game. And uh, he's going to have to get involved more. Second and four. Hit as he threw. And incomplete. J.T. Smith almost was able to hang on. And Keena Turner blasted Stout as he threw the ball. Very good coverage downfield. Oh, great coverage there. It's Griffin covering turn. Now the ball's a little bit late to JT. He knocks the ball actually out of his hands. Griffin hadn't gotten his hand up there. Smith would have made the catch. But again, you see, there are three 49ers around the football. They go to it. They really do. They have 23 interceptions. It is third down and four. They screen it out here, and Farrell, with a good acceleration, gets a first down and more. You see him run away from the tackler who was behind him, and he moved down to the 26 or 7-yard line. It's a great play by Larry Roberts, who rushes the passer. Once he recognizes the screen, turns all the way around, pursues Farrell down the field, and makes the tackle. First down for the Cardinals, who trail 20 to 3. 15-yard pickup. Now we come to the two-minute warning. And when we resume, the Cardinals will have the ball, San Francisco. On that last pass completion, you see where the circle is. That's Larry Roberts, the defensive end for the 49ers. Now, this is what Pursuit's all about. He gets blocked. Now, some guys might say, oh, I'm not going to catch Earl Farrell. Are you kidding? But here's a guy who's not quitting. He's continuing downfield and makes the play. That's the difference between touchdown runs by backs and guys that stop them going in for a little minor repair. Roberts is a rookie out of Alabama, number two draft pick. He's 6'3", 264. Put his finger back on. And there's the score. There's the time left in the half. Roy Green to the right. E.T. Smith to the left. Motion by Mitchell. Delay to Farrell. And he lost the ball. And the Cardinals get it back. Somebody stripped it out of the arms of Earl Farrell. Wayne Board got a hand on him. You know, I, sometimes I just wonder, you move the football all the way down the field throwing the football. The first time after a two-minute warning, you run a guy in motion, you spread the defense out, you run a draw play, and you get zip. There you see Dwayne Board's going to strip the ball away, playing off the blocker, and just tears the ball loose. Recovered by St. Louis. Cardinals got it back and gained a couple. Smith. And did he catch it? Yes, he did. A touchdown on a diving, rolling catch by J.T. Smith with Griffin covering. J.T. Smith gets his second touchdown of the year. With 117 remaining in the half. Good throw by Stout. Great throw. Great protection by the offensive line. A sharp Chilton, Clark, Bostic, and Smith. They've really given Stout an opportunity to throw the football. Both there he of, is. Back in the, the pocket. Each official looked at the other to see whether or not the ball had touched the ground. There you see. The, there's a great diving catch. Well, I guess he did, huh? The officials, the officials thought so. And they're kicking the extra point, so he must have. 20 to 9. 20 to 10. And 117 remaining in the half. So we've had a lot of fireworks here. 
That pass play covered 24 yards to J.T. Smith. There you see Smith on the lower part of your screen, Roy Green on the middle part. Now, as they move into their routes, Green's going to clear the middle. Now, Tommy Homo, there you see right in the middle of your screen, he starts to jump over on Roy, and J.T. Smith runs the post inside of Griffin, makes an excellent catch. You notice how he brought the ball into him just before he hit the ground, and he holds it up in the air, and he says, I got it. Touchdown. There was Homo. He was on the coverage. 117 remaining in the half. Lee kicks off. Derek Crawford, Derek Harmon are deep. Line drive, and it is taken by Crawford. Uh oh, the Cardinals need a tackle and bumped out of bounds. You now, Bill Walsh, Coach Walsh in Montana, they have a decision to make now. You've got a 10 point lead, get a minute and 10 seconds to go in the half, all your timeouts. Do you try and move the ball down the field and get a score, or do you sit on it and just play the game conservatively? I happen to think that Bill Walsh is not a conservative guy. He would do what I would do, and that's go after it and put the ball in the air. As a quarterback, I love this particular part of the football game. It won't take us long to find out. White Clark goes to the left, and Rice to the right. We can have receivers like Rice and Clark. There's no sense sitting on it. No. And they run it to Rathman. And the rookie running back gets a few. You can let the clock run or call time. Now they're at the line of scrimmage. They're in a hurry-up offense. Yeah, but they didn't use their timeouts. We're down to 55 seconds. Plenty of time. Second and six. Screen. And a first down. Now they call the timeout. And a timeout with 42 seconds left in the half. Cribs caught that ball. The name of the game right now is defense as far as the Cardinals are concerned with Cribs and Craig in the backfield. And it is swung out to Cribs. And he gets out of bounds smartly. With 36 seconds left in the half, a six-yard game. The 49ers love to run their two wide receivers on posts, their tight end out in the flat, and their halfback out in the flat. Now, he'll hit that guy for seven, eight, nine yards and walk down the field and it'll take him a lot less time than 36 seconds to get in field goal or touchdown range. You know that Cribs had his uh, problems at Buffalo and elsewhere, but uh, we were told last night by Cliff Stout that he's a heck of a guy. Oh, he is a heck of a guy. He's a heck of a football player. You know that. Second down and three and incomplete. Flag down. And the flag is down. And Montana gets up. Baker, whom we showed you taking it easy on Montana earlier, now he's talking to him and Baker saying man I may have but I didn't feel I didn't want to Stafford Mays he comes in to help with the pass rush Number 60 I didn't, defense. didn't get a chance to see it now we all get a chance to see it again that was roughing the passer call there comes Glassby around the corner Bubba Baker hits him yeah well you know you nah, can't stop I'm sorry I'm sorry I got to disagree you know I don't want to see anything happen to Joe and uh, and I don't think anybody else does, but How there comes a in? point where you got to let guys play football. And I, I agree with that 100%. You're absolutely right. He had the football. You got a chance to hit him. He didn't hit him late. He didn't hit him cheap. And Gene Stallings has been concerned about the calls he's gotten. He feels like he's gotten some lousy calls. And I got to agree with him. That one was a lousy call. He's hot. The ball's at the 34 of St. Louis. And a first down after roughing the passer. Outside and a flag, and there's an interference call. There goes another flag. It's flag day. Lionel Washington was called this time. Montana knocked down again. Joe hasn't seen that much grass, I think, in a long time this game. Pass interference. Defense 48. Push down. Call against Lionel Washington. That's that little play I was talking about where they run that halfback out in the flat. That's and there's Cribs. Lionel Washington. They I mean, put his arm right around him. There's no question about it. And there's Joe going back in the pocket. Here comes Cribs out in the flat. Sets, makes a throw, and bang. That's Clasby. Now, see, he could I sure don't either. see the difference in this one and the one that they called the penalty on before. I mean, they're putting them down gently, but they are putting them down. Rice is to the right. He's the guy to watch. But they run the ball to Craig. And he is down inside the 25. Use another one of their timeouts. Well, it looks like they're going to get some points out of this. 
Time out, one remaining for San Francisco. That was a big penalty on this drive. Yes, it was. You know, it was an incomplete pass, and, uh, you know, they, they walk it down. Bryce has caught two touchdown passes. Clark, is, who is a favorite receiver of Montana, goes to the left. Rice to the right, Francis the tight end on the right side. And you dump it off short. That's Cribs, and he got out of bounds with 16 seconds left. That's a first down. He got hit again. Montana got hit again. He is wearing special protection. We take a look at his locker, and up above his locker is that flak jacket. Just what they call a ducktail that covers the area which had been operated on. So he has some special protection. He's, he's passing the test, didn't he? He sure is. Now, the last three plays, there you see him. He's just been getting sandwiched. He's going to need more than a flak jacket if this keeps up. Ball is down to the St. Louis 19. Two tight ends. First down. And he is sacked. And that was David Galloway who got in. That's the first time they have tackled him. Timeout called with 12 seconds left by the 49ers. Well, one thing we know about Montana is back's okay. His <laughs> back's all right. I don't know if the rest of his body's going to be very feel very good. Now the operation, he's got a he's got a five-inch scar. If you hold your fingers up and you know spread your thumb and your forefinger part, that's a pretty good sized scar. But uh, he said he feels terrific. You know, visiting with him through the week in practice and watching him warm up out there. I've never seen him throw that much before a game. He said, Joe, I got to get as much throwing in as I can. I've missed a lot. And uh, had, having taken the shots that he's taken, he's just got to feel a little bit better now. Worshing a 47-yard field goal. Rice, a 45-yard pass for Montana. John Lee, a 37-yard field goal, St. Louis. 35-yarder by Worshing. Then a 40-yard touchdown pass to Rice, to Jerry Rice. What Bill Walsh has told Joe Montana here, they've just used their last timeout. There's only 12 seconds. If they complete the ball inbounds on an in pattern, I don't think they're going to have enough time to get their field goal unit out. So what he's probably told him, he said, look, take your shot. If you can get the ball to somebody going towards the sidelines, fine. If not, throw the ball away. Or into the end zone. Or into the end zone. But make sure it goes incomplete. But don't we don't want anybody to catch it in the field of play unless it's a touchdown. And the last touchdown was a 24-yarder from Clipstown to J.T. Smith. They're already within field goal range. No more timeouts for San Francisco. Here's it out for Rice, and it is incomplete. Well, that would have prevented the field goal try by Lionel Washington and Leonard Smith. He did not do what you told him to do. Well, he had the shot at the touchdown. He threw it out of bounds. I mean, it would have been uh, either a touchdown or an out of bounds. What happens is there you see the ball go up in the air. Rice is double covered. The ball's actually underthrown. And this, is, this has been the nemesis for the Cardinals. All now, Rice has a shot at it. All right? There it is. Hold it. One more try. One more finally hits the ground. This is going to be a 41-yard try by Wershing. His longest this year is 50 yards. Moroski holding. High snap. He got it down. Kicked it very good, and it is good. So a 13-point lead for the 49ers and no more time left in the half. A 41-yard field goal by Wershing. He had been in a slump, but he has kicked three field goals today and two touchdown passes to Rice. He underwent major back surgery. On November 9th, he was back throwing touchdown passes. Joe Montana is back for the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, Doug Flutie makes his quarterbacking debut for the Chicago Bears. His first pass. Going in for the five. The receiver is open. Flutie throws. The receiver dives. Doug, how'd it turn out for you? Not too well, says the little man. But I'll be back to show him yet. Meanwhile, down in New Orleans. Yes, there's Montana's stats. 10 for 15. Two TDs. The one interception. Now, back by Clasby, the left defensive end. The two hits weren't very different. And then a couple of downs later, he got nailed again by people coming up the middle. That was Stafford Mays who was in on him. But with it all, he is all right. And uh, one thing that really hurt the Cardinals was that fumble when they were going in and San Francisco turned around and came back. And Ray Worshing will kick it off. 
neither one of these uh, kickoff people today get the ball into the end zone by Sikahama. Eric Swanson, our deep for St. Louis. That was a line drive and into the end zone. Just, oh, <laughs> that surprised me. He didn't run it out. No. I guess uh, there's Sikahama putting the ball down. And Stout will run the ball club from the 20. I was surprised Sikahama didn't run it out. We talked to Cliff Stout earlier this week. Uh, I don't think it's any controversy whatsoever. At least it hasn't affected myself and Neil. It's, that's something. Controversy for the fans. It has nothing to do with what's going on down here with coaches and players. Uh, we hope we hope that there's always the competition. It's going to make both of us better. And, you know, I didn't... I think if... Uh, when they made a trade to get me, if they thought all I wanted to do was sit on the bench, then they wouldn't have wanted me. Mm. You know, every athlete in this locker room here wants to play football. And, uh, and the up-back barrel he is stacked by Jim Stuckey. That's just something they're going to do to keep the 49ers honest. You can't come out and throw every down, but I'll guarantee you they're going to have to put the football in the air to move it down the field, just like they did before the half. Earl Farrell got a couple of yards, and we're underway here in the second half with the Cardinals trailing by 13. San Francisco had a turnover on an interception, and the Cardinals had one on a fumble in the first half. Roy Green to the left, along with Smith. Missed a tackle on Mitchell, but Tom Homo, who is coming up very quickly, made the tackle, and it's third and long. In the first half, both of these teams piled up some yards. 286 for San Francisco, 195 for the Cardinals. That's respectable. Well, it's not only respectable, it almost comes to the totals they've had for uh, entire football games their last two weeks. So, I mean, it, it isn't a question of them not being able to do things. They're just uh, overmatched as far as the offensive firepower goes with the 49ers. Torrey Nixon in there is the extra defensive back on third and six. Four-man rush. Stout could run for the first down. He gets it. That's typical of him. He knew where he had to go, and he crossed the 30, and he was taken down. When he was tackled last week, he said it felt good to get hit. <laughs> you know, he's been a very productive runner. Had 553 yards uh, when he played in the National Football League previous to coming back. Now, here he just gets outside and moves. You know, watch, watch this niftiness. Torrey Nix is going to take him out. And, well, okay. He goes six, down like a quarterback anyway. He's big though, 6'4", 215. He likes to run. Ball at the Cardinal, 31. First down pass. Long over the middle, Marsh. The tight end got turned around. Let's go to Brent Musburger, all the way across the country to New York. That's the little big man. Joe Morris is at it again. They can't bring him down, and the Giants lead the Philadelphia Eagles right now, 17 to nothing. Back to Jack and Joe. Well, the uh, Giants piling up some yards against the Eagles, and that can be tough to do. That was the first pass the Cardinals have thrown to the tight end. It was also a great opportunity. They double-covered the outside receivers. He had Marsh going down the middle, and Stout wishes he had that one back because he had a big game. Not a very a good complete. throw? No, not a good throw at all. Second and ten. Green in motion. Dumps it off here to J.T. Smith. He stays on his feet and fights for yards. It'll make it third down and about a yard as Carlton Williamson finished him off. He was tough after catching the ball. Well, he is tough. You know, he's been, like you mentioned earlier, he's been nicked up. He's been the only receiver. The problem with being the only veteran receiver on a football team is you have to work so much in practice. By game time, you're exhausted. There you see the flow of the defense. Stout gets the ball out. Now, JT puts his head down, runs back into the middle to cut back, and then picks up nine yards. It is third down and a yard. JT has caught seven for 103 yards. And a touchdown. Third and one. Big play for the Cardinals. Let's see if they have motion and use that wham play. Here they come with Farrell. First down. Ooh, he saved it that time, didn't he? Olmo hung on for dear life. On Earl Farrell, who got the first down. They pushed him out of the middle. There you see. Now, normally you see there's Manu Tulisa Asasopo to the left of your screen. They handle the nose guy. When you handle the nose guy, it makes it tough for those linebackers to play inside on the 34, and the secondary's got to come up and make the play. 
big uh, block down uh, blocking by uh, Joe Bostic. Yeah, the, you know, the, the two guards and tackles, they just have to control that interior if they're going to run it all. I really believe that they're running just to keep San Francisco honest, and they're doing a good job of it. Let's see if they're throwing first down again out of the eye. Stop play. Delay again. 30 second again. Last game, number 18. Well, they're piling Touchdown. on to their penalties. Touchdown. That is the fifth of the day for St. Louis. Most penalized team in the league. There's a 30 second out. As a quarterback, the first thing you want to do is find out where that is in the football stadium. There are different places in the stadium. And you have to be cognizant of it in the locations. And if you can't get the play out in time, you know, you're going to wind up using up all that 30 seconds. First and 15. Uh-oh, Mitchell, it doesn't drop many. Dropped that one, and there wasn't anybody around him. Well, he's only had, you know, previous to this game, he's only had 21 receptions, and Stump, uh, at one time, was one of the leading receivers there, for the Cardinals. There's a flag down. Illegal motion against the Cardinals. That one might be turned down, leaving it second and 15. They're going to turn it down. We have illegal formation, only six men on the line. Penalty is declined, it's second down. That's the second time they've had that same penalty. And Stalling is barking over there. He barks a lot of those officials. He says, I don't like them. Well, you know, he's got... He said, they don't like me. They don't like me, I don't like them, and I'm tired of writing letters complaining. So he's just trying, trying to go on and, uh, and coach. The Cardinals took the second half kickoff. They're at their own 49, second and 15. Kept the ball for more than four minutes. They use it again to J.T. Smith on a screen. He made a good move and gets big yards. He avoided a tackle. He got away from Griffin, the rookie. And Roy Green made a block, and McKire made the tackle. Well, you see Roy Green coming from the right bottom part of your picture. There he comes into the picture. When they run that type of formation, it takes them out of double coverage. There you see him get in front. You don't have to really knock somebody down to get a good block, but he just shields the defensive back long enough to give JT an opportunity to get down the field. Ball is in the San Francisco 42, third and one. They'll probably use that motion again. Well, not. Play action pass. Maybe. Pitch it to the deep. Austin Mitchell. He got a first down. He like just did, but he got it. Like I said, pitch it to and the deep. They were back. both wrong. <laughs> That's why we're up here. A first down for the Cardinals. Now they've kept the ball for more than four and a half minutes. Look at what the Giants are doing in the third quarter, and Dallas leads the Raiders in the third quarter, 10 to 3. San Diego over Denver in Boy. the third quarter, 6 to 3. That would be an upset. It's the 10th play of the drive for St. Louis. <laughs> St. Louis doing a nice job of mixing up their runs and passes, particularly on first down. And it's first down now. <laughs> and Mitchell. They're ridden down. That's one guy who doesn't miss it. Williamson, he can tackle. Oh, he does. That, that pitch back really threw uh, Mitchell a little bit off stride. Well, you know, it was the penetration that caused Mitchell uh, to come offside. You get that Milton McCall or Charles Haley coming up the field, causing him to, to bow out back. I'll tell you, he did a heck of a job just for it to be a one-yard loss. And it is second down now. Loss more like two. It's second and 12. Green and Smith, the wide receivers. Good protection again. And first down inside the 30-yard line. Ricky Ellison was on the coverage, and the pass taken in by J.T. Smith. Brother, he is tough today. Well, what they're doing is they're doubling Roy Green, and it's given J.T. an opportunity to get open. There you see Tim McKire going back. They're dropping back. Now, J.T.'s going to hook right here, right around the linebacker into that dead area in the middle. Makes a nice play. He's running real well after he catches the football. Too. They haven't gone downfield very often today. No, the uh, 49ers aren't going to let him either. This time again. And Earl Farrell. Boy, there was a saving tackle also by the linebacker, Keenan Turner. He cut him down. as a four-yard gain. And now we have eight and a half left in the half. So they've kept the ball for almost seven minutes on this drive. I'll tell you, the Cardinals are playing real consistent football. They have overcome a series of penalties in this drive. 
which is indicative of a good offensive unit. It looks like Cliff Stout has given this team some stability in the offensive side. The ball at the 25 of the 49ers. Crowd yelling defense. And a fake reverse, and Mitchell breaks a few tackles, and he was finally undressed by Larry Roberts. Wow. Did he get whacked? Roberts put an end to all that, I'll tell you. When you talk to the defensive coaches of the 49ers, two names come up, Larry Roberts and Charles Haley. They're two young football players that really are making an impact. Now, there was a shot at a player down on the sideline. There's Stump trying to turn it back inside. He makes the cut, and there comes Roberts. Ooh. Man, that hurt. That really hurt. And Mitchell is down, right? That him? Yeah, that's Mitchell. And a timeout. Oldsmobile dealer. Sikahama has replaced Mitchell. Here comes the screen. And it works for a first down and more. Down inside the 10 to Sikahama just into the game. And it is a first down for St. Louis at the nine-yard line. Stout did a fine job. That screen did not develop as quickly as he might have liked. And he kept giving ground. There he is in the shotgun. Sikahama is down here in the lower part of your screen. He sets. Sets, 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 sets. Now he slides out. Does a nice job. Haley trying to get him. Now he just outruns the secondary. Homo had a shot at him. Now he gets out of bounds. Whoop. Right there. He ran away from Haley. Now Mitchell comes back into the huddle. The ball is put down at the eight-yard line. First and goal. It kept the ball for almost eight minutes after taking the second half kickoff. Stout throws, and it's incomplete to J.T. Smith on the slant in. That was a catchable ball. They run a little play-action fake into the line of scrimmage and run J.T. Smith on the quick post. There's yeah. J.T. Now, the fake you can't see in the line. He freezes him, does a nice job, cuts. That's a catchable ball. Just slips out of his hand. And it is second and goal. They have run on this uh, play, on this drive, they've run 16 plays. This is the 17th. Second and goal. And now Stout calls the timeout. In compiling a record of five and three with one tie, you can see that the San Francisco defense has been very stingy with regard to giving up touchdowns. Well, when they get inside the 20-yard line, which is uh, one of the things coaches, you know, have up on their goal charts, is how many touchdowns or how many field goals you've given up. They've only given up six touchdowns this year when a team gets inside the 20. What do you think they're going to do here? I, well, if they come up in the same defense, now the reason they'll probably run the ball if they give them the same defense, possibly with an option with Stout. If they change their defense, they're probably going to have to throw it. I mean, it depends on what the defense is going to do. The Cardinals came into the game wanting to run the option a little bit, the option toss. If they got a certain look from the 49er defense, that's what they were going to do. They've kept the ball for almost eight minutes. 49ers haven't touched it here in the third quarter. Now Smith and Green go to the right. The San Francisco has come out with a different defensive look prior to the timeout. Rolling right, looking to run. He throws and he's intercepted. Unbelievable. Kim Fonhorst intercepted. When it looked like Stout could have run almost to the goal line, and he threw it right in his belly. He also had Roy Green behind him. Well, there is a misfire, and look at Gene Stallings. Bonhorst gets his fourth of the year. Here's a play-action pass. They got the straight 3-4. He makes a fake into the line to stump. He's got plenty of room. He's got Farrell in the flat now. now just come, run right just coming into your left of your picture, you'll see. You see Smith? And he just threw it to him. Happy birthday, Jim Fonars. Turned 28 yesterday. Got his second interception in two games. And you ate all the cake. I ate a lot of it. <laughs> Roy Green. I guess with the intended receiver. Here comes Gridden rolling out from the 20-yard line. Who was he trying to throw it to, Joe? I happen to think he was trying to get to... It either was Roy Green or J.T. Smith coming from the back of the of the end zone. It, uh, it looked like Roy Green making a little delay pattern coming across the back and just wound up with a short arm. Good run by Cribs, making it second down and three. You 
Williams in the backfield with Roger Trey. Branch is the tight end. A good fake in the pass. By Mary's Dwight Clark for a first down. You know, Bill Walsh was talking about Dwight Clark and Joe Montana. The two of them have been very close friends for a long time. And the one thing that Clark says that Montana does, and we watched him practice this particular play, is his timing is so precise. Clark's not as fast as Jerry Rice, but he runs such precise routes, and the timing between Montana and Clark just makes the ball happen. He keeps the ball low. Very whereas, little elevation well, on his throws. That's right, and the reason why is you don't want to get your, your wide receivers killed coming into the middle of the football field, so you keep it down low. Three wide receivers. And the running play. Smash down at the 45-yard line. Cribs carried the ball. Freddie Joe Anthony Nunn. Bell was there. Freddie Joe Nunn. In Candlestick Park, about 60,000 on hand. A lovely day. Five and a half left in the third quarter. Three field goals by Ray Worshing. Two touchdown passes to Jerry Rice. Touchdown pass caught by J.T. Smith of the Cardinals. They've had no scoring in the second half. And it's 23 to 10, 49ers. Joe Montana looks real comfortable now. I think he's just settled right into the flow of the game. Rathman on a wing, and now Montana calls timeout. And he didn't like what he saw either. 5-12 left in the third quarter. That was a shame on that Cardinal drive. It ended with the interception, their second turnover. At the 12 30 East. Second down and eight from their own 45 for the 49ers. Russ Francis. He'd like a tank when he gets rolling, and he has a first down inside the Cardinal 45. Well, you know, that's the offensive scheme of the 49ers. They want to get rid of the football quick. Joe Montana is not going to stand back there all day. They're not going to run too deep a routes. If they do, it's going to be for a touchdown. If not, they're going to hit the tight end in the flat. They're going to take the uh, slant to the wide receiver, hit the halfback out in the flat. Just a little, little dinky, dinky control style of uh, passing game, which will open up their running game. Earlier today, as you saw, New Orleans beat the Rams. That makes this doubly important for the 49ers. First down. Going for all of it. They run that play action fake in. They ran the play before. You saw the catch by uh, Francis. Now just Joe just hangs it up and lets Rice outrun him. That's number 12 for Rice. Here's Joe. Pull up my sleeve a little bit. I got another one. Wershing hasn't missed an extra point all year. Didn't take him long to get real comfortable. Again, all, all of this after the interception down in the end zone the other way. That's good. And it's 30 to 10. You know, from a coach's standpoint, you take a look at that. That's a 14-point swing for the Cardinals. They came away with nothing, an interception in the end zone, gave up a shot at a touchdown, and got one going the other way. The way the ball hung up at the end, you would think that Carter would have had a time to turn around. Well, he could. You see, the ball goes up in the air. He puts such trajectory and loft on the ball because of the speed of Rice. So he lets him run under it. It's like shooting a basketball. Two basketballs will fit through a hoop if you drop them from the top. The same thing about throwing deep footballs. You lay it up high instead of flat you let it come down and drop it into the basket and that's jerry rice puts his hands out bang lands right in there that's three for him today 12 for him this year the number one draft pick out of mississippi valley state some other clubs passed him up and it took him a while to learn but he is something now it took him a while to learn and only because last year when he used to come to the line of scrimmage he was trying to remember the plays remember the defense and when you start to think too much on a football field your natural ability gets impeded this year he knows what he has to do he feels so much more comfortable now we're getting an opportunity to see the natural ability of jerry rice Play football basketball and track I bet you did all of them well too grew up in starksville mississippi 424 left in the third quarter. Here's a squib kick. And he bobbled around and picked up by Sikahama. And he's out across the 25. Well, the last 
time the Cardinals had the ball, they can see the Cardinals from their own 27. And that is incomplete. Incomplete. Coming back and trying to pick it off was McKayer, the rookie, out of Texas Arlington. Wayne Board put the pressure on. And it's second down. There's Jim Schaffner, the offensive coordinator. Washington had to come from behind to beat Green Bay. Yeah, they, they said the temperature was really minus five degrees up in Green Bay today. Really? With the, with, with the wind chill. Wind chill factor, yep. Tom Sack had a good day. O'Brien had a great day for the Jets. Trailing by 20 points, the Cardinals can't afford to run very often now. And it is ruled incomplete. Charles Haley was in on him, along with the other linebacker, Michael Walter. Kansas City continuing to play well, aren't they? They have a record of seven and three now. And Houston, which won their first game of the year, finally came back to win another. They have a player down, that's Mike Ruther. Plays a guard position for the Cardinals. And 10. Four minutes left in the third quarter, and they trail by 20. Right in the middle of your screen is Charles Haley, who has really become sort of the heir apparent to the Freddie Dean syndrome, which is rush the passer. He loves it. He's big. He moves around. He's 6'5", 230, and uh, was responsible for that last rush on Stout. Now that the Cardinals have to throw on every down, the pressure is really on, and it looks like it's going to be again. It really is. They lay their ears back and just come a-flying. Four-man rush. Pass is thrown and incomplete to Roy Green. Roy Green downfield and Torrey Nixon was covering. And the Cardinals are going to have to punt. Here's something about this game. Stout gets up. San Francisco has not punted the ball all day. They've scored on six of their seven possessions. The only time they were stopped was on an interception by Leonard Smith. And this is going to be the fourth punt by Greg Cater. Griffin is back to get it. And he's averaged more than 11 yards per return. Red Cater kicking. Not too hot a kick, but away from the receiver and out of bounds right at the 42. Let's check the NFC Central and see what transpired there after that 31-yard kick. Washington beat Green Bay, Minnesota over Detroit, Chicago over Tampa Bay, no upsets. Now here's the way they stand after today's play. The Bears by two over Minnesota, two-team race, obviously, and then Detroit, Tampa Bay, Green Bay is one only one. The ball is at the 42. Cardinals haven't stopped them very well. First down pass, fumble, and that's uh, ruled a forward pass and incomplete. Anytime the ball goes forward, whether it's underhand, yeah, but shuffle pass, it and, well, he was trying to get it out to uh, <laughs> Joe Cripps. At least that's what he's looking. He's laughing, too. Yeah. Watch this. He's trying to get rid of it anyway. There's Freddie Joe Nunn putting the pressure on. Joe says, here. It's the old option play. And there's Joe Cribbs picking it up. That's what the 49ers have done. Stopped only once on an interception. The Cardinals, only time they stopped them. Tom a lot of, Rathman in the backfield. A lot of people are going to say just having Joe Montana back makes a difference, and they're absolutely right. Well, it makes the running game go as well, as you pointed out earlier. Here's Cribs. Across the 45, out near the 48, tackled by Nico Noga. We haven't mentioned his name very often, but 49ers have been moving the ball downfield. The 49ers will not go into a shell and run the football consistently. You know, you get to a point where you, you've got a 20-point lead in a ball game and coaches become conservative and they try and pound it, pound it, pound it. That's not the way the San Francisco 49ers play football. They're going to continue to do the things all through the 60 minute that moves the football down the field for them. And that's run a little bit, pass a little bit, and take the shots. Cardinals playing without E.J. Jr., without Alani Young. Here's the reverse to Rice. He's going to throw. Yep. 
Marcus Francis. You know, you don't find you don't find many wide receivers or halfbacks who throw that who will look around. But Rice did look to oh. find Francis. He went to the secondary receiver and he put a nice touch up. Here's the handoff. There you see the handoff to Cribs, the handoff to Rice. Now he comes around, sets himself, can't get it downfield. Just look at that, look at that tight spiral. Big target goes up, Cedric Mack, and Lonnie Leonard Smith, Smith, Leonard Smith. He's caught enough to figure why not let him throw one or two. The next game for the 49ers will be a week from tomorrow at Washington. First down at the Cardinal 36, Cribs. Lasby hauled him down from behind after a gain of a yard or so. There's no quit in this Cardinal football team. You know, they've lost four of their football games by seven points or less. And uh, Gene Stalling teams will not give up. And you know they're not a passive football team. They'll hit you. Absolutely. They're very aggressive, sometimes too aggressive. And that aggressiveness gets them in trouble. It gets them in trouble with penalties. Gets them in trouble with touchdown passes because they want to come up on a play-action pass and try and tackle the guy. And you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Second and nine. There's E.J. Jr. behind uh, Gene Stallings, who's out. Wilson, the wing back. Here comes Cribs. And he's hauled down by Cedric Mack. The reason Wilson was lined up on that wing, he is a big wide receiver. Oh, he's 6'3", 215. I think he's heavier than 215, i got to be honest with you. And when you see him walk around the field, he's just a big, well-built guy. And he got a good block, making a third and one. Kept the clock going. There's Wilson. He's out of Washington State. Here's his block, number 85. There he is, right down the lower part. You see, you see how he squares up on the defensive back, Cedric Mack. Now, there's nobody out here. Farners does a nice job of turning it in. Cedric hangs on, makes the tackle. They're down and one. Rathman is the fullback. Grid slants, gets the first down. Inside the 25. And there goes the flag. Leonard Smith got all tangled up with Russ Francis downfield. Those two were going at it like a couple of Rams. Who did what? Who did what? Russ Francis is going to get called for roughing. If Marion comes in, the other official. That's what it looked like. Personal foul. It's against San Francisco as Leonard Smith and Russ Francis got tangled up. Randy Cross is in there at center. Unnecessary roughness number 81. Third down. All of that happened away from the ball as Cribs ran with the ball. Francis Francis is not a softy. He's a tough player. Oh, he is a tough guy. He's play, He busted a rib. I mean, really broken. And if you feel it, it just sticks out and protrudes away from his side. And he's just wearing a small rib pad over it, and he goes out and runs around, takes shots, gets hit. Third been, and 13. Been all world for a number of years. And a draw to Craig, and the Cardinals covered it very well. Galloway was on the bottom of the pile, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. Al Baker was also in on the tackle. So it's going to be fourth down for San Francisco. That's the end of the third quarter with the score 30 to 10 in favor of San Francisco. We pause for a word from your local station. Have you driven in a Ford? The crowd has enjoyed it as the 49ers lead 30 to 10. They have a fourth down, and Max Runniger is punting for the first time today. Sikahama is the safety man, but Runniger will try to get it out of bounds. Should kick to his left. High snap. He angles away, just pooches the ball high in the air, and the safety man will let it go, and it's caught. You can do that. And the ball is at the Cardinal one or two yard line. Troy Nixon went down and caught the ball. Cardinal stayed away from it. And as long as you don't interfere with anybody, you can catch well, it 32 absolutely. yards. You're absolutely right. If the guy back to return the punt, in this case, Viseka Hemet, does not make an effort to go for it, then the defensive people have a right to field it. And in this case, he fielded it and dropped it, and they're down on the one-yard line. Torrey Nixon was a number one, number two draft choice with the Washington Redskins last year. And in talking to him, his 
biggest thrill was just getting into the National Football League, and, and he really didn't play well at all during training camp. San Francisco traded for him. He lost a little weight, got more excited about the game, and he's played very, very good football for the 49ers. Cardinals have to punch it out. They're a yard and a half away from their goal line. Mitchell comes out near the five. Mitchell started the day hoping that he would run the ball 25 or 30 times. That's exactly right, Jack. And what's happened is the same thing that's happened to the Cardinals all year. They've gotten behind, and they have not had an opportunity to play a control style of offense with running, and so they've had to go to the air. Which brings up a point now. Now's a great time to take a shot at a long pass. You, you know, the, the 49ers are going to have to defend 95 yards of the field. Why not take a shot? A little play action into the middle. Bang, go for it. There's moving by Marsh, the tight end. You know the history of the Cardinals this year? Counting today's game, they've been outscored in the first quarter by a total of 58 to 6 in the first quarter. So how can you run when you fall behind like that? Uh, it's really, uh, you know, the, fir the first, the beginning of the game, the first five minutes of the game, the first five minutes of the, of the third quarter usually set the tempos for the half, and they just have not been fast starters in either one of the halves. It is second, second down. Eight. The Cardinals have to come out to the 12 for a first down. I'd still come out and run a play-action pass. Nothing to lose. Green is to the right, and Smith to the left. Play-action pass. And out here in the flat. And Mitchell can't go anywhere. You know, you got to give credit to the San Francisco defense. They realize it, too. They roll up on the outside wide receiver. They're going to give him the short pass. I don't feel like it's dangerous throwing down in your own end. I think it's a great opportunity to throw down. Mitchell, you can tell, is hurting. He was bopped earlier by uh, Larry Roberts, Boy, you remember the shot. play. And he's, he's not 100%. You can tell that. He's having difficulty breathing. Well, you you know, he's got his rib pads on, but still he took one right just above the rib pads, right? And it looked like the sternum area. And I'll tell you, he hit him full bore. Anytime you get somebody that big coming at you, it's definitely going to shake up your insides. Three wide receivers, including Troy Johnson. Third down, six from the end zone. Stout throws, and it's intercepted. Coming back with it is Nixon. First and goal. Nixon, who caught the punt a moment ago, intercepts the pass. He returned one for 88 yards for a touchdown in an earlier ball game this year, and now he's picked off another one. He comes in and plays the nickelback position. There you'll see Tor Troy Johnson trying to hook around. The ball is just behind him. Pressure from the defensive line, and... Torrey cuts it up. Now he says, I'm going to put my, I'm going for it right now. Of course, the Cardinals recover, and he doesn't quite make it, but uh, having a big day. Down to the St. Louis three. 49ers have scored in each quarter thus far. And we may not see much of Montana if they get another score. They get this one. He may sit down. Here's the running play to Cribs. Kept his feet and got the touchdown. That is his second rushing touchdown of the year. Thirty-six to ten. Twelve fifty left in the game. It's going to be a long fourth quarter for the Cardinals. Well, you know they're going to have to throw the football in the air. If you throw some incompleted passes, it means the stop the clock's going to stop. So you're right; it will be long. Bill Walsh has got to be very satisfied with what he's seen as far as his offensive production goes this I year. I bet we don't see Montana anymore. No, I don't. I, I think it's time to take him out. You know, he's he's comfortable. It's time to move him to the sidelines. Give Mike Morosky a chance to play. Ray, oh, it's blocked. That's the first extra point that they've had blocked all year. And Galloway got in, and he blocked it, and that didn't feel very good. And Leonard Smith is shaken up. On the sideline, they're tending to David Galloway, number 65. you got to hand it to him. It'd be very easy to say, go ahead and kick the extra point, make it 37 to 10. I don't care, but... That's not what he did. He came roaring in there. No, he's all year long. He's been playing hurt. He's been playing tough. Uh, Gene Stalling says he's just the kind of guy that I really want on his football team. Trey Worshing. And it is taken by Sikahema on the four. He made a good run out near the 32-yard line before the linebacker Michael Walter tackled him. 
Next week in the National Football League, the Bears have to go to... He shall. 12.40 left. Stop the quarterback. Line up the same. March the tight end. Four-man rush. Screen, screen pass. And good yards for Earl Farrell out near the 40-yard line. Seven-yard pickup. Tackled by Fonhorst and Ellison. Now look at those total yards. Cardinals, under ordinary circumstances, would be that's pretty well off. That's with a very yards. respectable day, but when you're going up against a team that's run up over 400 yards of offense, it makes it a little bit long. The score is 36 to 10. As the 49ers led at the half, 23 to 10. Second down, three. And Mitchell picks his way for a first down across the 45. Now, a lot of people are going to say, why, when you're down 26 points, are you running the football? What you want to do is you just don't want to go out and throw the ball and destroy total and complete confidence in your football team. You want to try and develop some type of offensive continuity. Run a little bit, pass a little bit. Now the game has gotten to a situation where you're really doing it just for yourself and not necessarily doing it to try and beat a defense. 11 and a half left in the game. First down at their own 45 for the Big Red. And a zinger out here to Roy Green. Stays on his feet. And another first down. Another first down to the 43 of San Francisco. You know a good performer on this Cardinal team is their right guard, Joe Bostic. Day in, day out. One game after another, number 71. He, he, eight years he he's doesn't played. mess up. Nope, eight years he, he's played out of Clemson. Played with his brother Jeff the center for the Washington Redskins and uh, he's he's really I think if you're talking about one guy that's Mr. Consistency Joe Bostic is that way first down St. Louis they fake the draw and this one is overthrown and incomplete and picked off by Homo Homo down the sideline has some blockers he's going to score a flag is down a flag is down and I think they're going to call it back are they? Illegal use of land, 71 uh, offense. Against St. Louis and against Bostic, about whom we were just talking. And it's a touchdown for Holmo. That was almost the same exact pass route where he had the last one picked off. Now you see Joe Bostic fighting to keep Bo Dwayne Board off. Now there's the throw. It's behind Marsh. There's Homo. Now he just picks up his own picket line as he moves down. Starts to move towards the sideline. Ricky Ellison out front does a nice job. Cuts back inside of Farrell and a few more points for the 49ers. Did you see, uh, did you see what uh, Bostic did? I yeah, didn't. Yeah, it looked like a takedown. You know, he got, he got tiled, tagged up with him. But, you know, it, I don't know. I'm... Offensive holding is something illegal. How do you call illegal use of hands on an offensive lineman when they're allowed to block with them? I have a little trouble figuring that one out sometimes. And the extra point is good by Wershing, making it 43 to 10. And the game is crumbling underneath the curtains. There you see at the top of your screen, Tom Homo. Now, you wonder what a free safety does in the National Football League. He sits in the middle of the field and just goes to the ball. There the ball was overthrown to Marsh, and now he starts to pick up his picket line coming down the field. You see the block here by Ricky Ellison. It's now, late on El Thrill. Now the kickoff by Wershing. Heads for Sikahama, but goes out of bounds, and now he'll have to kick from the 30-yard line. Let's check out the AFC East and see what transpired today. First the scores. New England won. They had to come from behind. Buffalo defeated Pittsburgh. And the Jets won again over Atlanta at Atlanta, 28 to 14. So now the standings in the AFC East. Jets rolling 9 and 1. New England in striking distance, 7 and 3. Miami doesn't play until Monday night at Cleveland. Then Buffalo and Indianapolis uh, still without a win. And here we have a 43 to 10 count. Worshing will kick from the 30 yard line. The 49ers, in talking to Coach Walsh yesterday, he was really concerned about how well his football team would respond and just that they have not played well. 
Um, he has certain plays that he likes to run. There are certain things he likes to do. And he just feels that Joe Montana does everything that he's ever asked and does it so well. Obviously, the production, the point production that they're getting today is uh, indicative of that type of an offense. Sick of him. He is out across the 30-yard line near the 34. Here's what's happened to the Cardinals today. Field goal. And the turnover. Then touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They've turned the ball over four times. And the 49ers have scored each time. By the way, that's the fifth interception return for a touchdown this year by San Francisco. And they now have 26 interceptions this year. Also, their defense has set up over 52% of the points scored by that football team. So, And it's held true today. Well, Stout has fumbled and been picked off three times. A fake screen left, a screen right, and it is Earl Farrell for good yards across the 40-yard line. We have 10 minutes left in this game. Let's go to Bent Musburger in New York. Well, Jack, they've got quite a bit more time left in this game. About eight minutes, and the Eagles finally strike. Cunningham gets it to Mike Quick. That's Quick's sixth touchdown of the year. So the Eagles are on the board. 17-7, Giants with the lead. Let's go back to Jack. Second down and two for the Cardinals from their 43. Farrell gets the first down. Nine and a half left in the game. Terrible things happen to you when you get behind in this league, no matter what team you are. Absolutely. You're forced to do things you're, that you don't want to do. You, come, takes, out, you come out of your game plan. The things you work to do all week, you can't do. Absolutely. You know, you, it's, like, it's like you've taken an entire week of practice and just cast it aside because now you have to go back to basically a two-minute type of an offense, whether you're... 25 points down or 33 points down or whatever. And a flag is thrown. Looks like holding against St. Louis. The umpire threw the flag. Pass was caught by Stump Mitchell and he was whacked again. Well, it's going to be against the 49ers for oh, a it? face mask penalty, I believe. Well, maybe we have two penalties. Illegal use of hands, number 94. First down. Call was against Charles Haley, the linebacker. It was pass rush. He must have come in a little bit high. And that's a first down. There's Gene Stalling. He has a long flight back home. His ball club will be two and eight. And a game at home against New Orleans next Sunday. Who is an up-and-coming football team. Yeah. Do you think this uh, quarterback controversy will start all over again? I don't think so. I, I think that uh, he's got to go with Stout more than one football game. Draw play to Farrell. Down to the 46. Ruther should have snapped the ball when the defensive man came into the neutral zone. Well, that's what happens. But if the quarterback is new and he's not under the center, if he does, the ball winds up going flying back. And you wind up, well, is the guy offside? Is the guy not offside? Do you recover the fumble? Do they recover the fumble? I think he did the right thing. You don't want to make any more mistakes. The Cardinals have plagued themselves all afternoon with penalties. Yeah, and their defense has crumbled today. They've been playing very well prior to today. Pass out here in the flat, and it is caught by Mitchell. And he is out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Bumped out by Holmo. Let's see what this game means to San Francisco. They're leading 43 to 10 with eight minutes left in the game. The Rams lost today, so they're seven and three. A win here would make it six, three, and one for San Francisco. Atlanta's now five, four, and one. They lost, and New Orleans won, and they're in the race. Five yeah, and five. And you know. L.A. has got to play San Francisco the last game of the season again, although things may change before that, but uh, San Francisco can at least look down the road if they're tied to that point. First down for the Cardinals at the 24. The blitz is on, and it is caught for your touchdown by J.T. Smith. They beat the blitz. That's his second of the day. 
That's one thing that Stout can do is read that blitz and do something about it. He not only read the blitz, but J.T. Smith did an excellent job playing this football. Don Griffin is right in his hip pocket. You'll see here they come with the full blitz. There comes Walters. There comes Boards. Stout gets it up. Now he fades, makes a play, although Griffin had his hand in there. Didn't matter. He still got the touchdown. Boy, he's had an afternoon. Two TDs, 154 yards, 10 catches. 43 to 16. John Lee will try the extra point with 750 remaining in the game. Gosh, that interception in the end zone just looms so big. Yeah, that one uh, after the very long drive by the Cardinals. Yep. Lee boots it through. 43 to 17. But the Cardinal defense has fallen. All right, Brent. The Cardinals are showing uh, an onside kick. 750 left. 43 17 in favor of San Francisco. They've been ahead throughout. There was one crunching interception for the Cardinals after they had a long drive of 16 plays, kept the ball for almost eight minutes, and then the interception. That changed it around. This ball's up for grabs, and it is recovered by San Francisco. Racing with the ball of Mike Wilson, the wide receiver. Now the Cardinals give the ball back to the 49ers, and let's see who their quarterback is going to be. Mike Moroski. Moroski it is. Out of Cal Davis. 6'4", 200-pounder. So far this year, 57% of his passes. And so, Joe Montana is finished for the day, and he had a wonderful afternoon. He did. It's a, it was a great debut afternoon for Joe Montana. Three touchdown passes. Really, he engineered the offense exactly the way it's designed. Ball is at the St. Louis 45. is in the backfield. Gribbs carries the ball to the 40. Got five. The more playing time Joe Cribbs gets, the more comfortable he's going to be with this offense, too. And I think today's production by Cribbs was indicative of the fact that he feels more comfortable in what they're doing. And I think that's just going to help that football team offensively become better and better and better. Mark Duda made the tackle. White Clark is in carrying the play. And there's Montana, and that's what he accomplished today. And he's happy. He is happy. Ribs and Rathman in the backfield. Ribs gets a first down. And the 49ers will stay on the ground. Tackled by Freddie Joe Nunn. Well, the Raiders now go ahead of the Cowboys in the fourth quarter by four, 17-13. And if Denver gets knocked off, that Raider win would be a big, big one for them. 9-3 San Diego in the fourth quarter. And the Giants by 10 in the fourth quarter at Philadelphia. Six and a half remaining in this one. Moroski to the big fullback, Rathman. And he got a nine or ten yard run on that one. And he got himself a little baby about two weeks ago, too. He's an excited daddy, I'll tell you that. Rathman is a big back at 6'1", 232, number three pick out of Nebraska. They earlier had picked Roger Craig out of Nebraska. That's a school where they run a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Second down and one. Look at the rushing yards. Last week, only 52, and they were moaning and groaning about this offensive line, but with Montana at quarterback because he was able to throw the ball, the running game got underway. Now a whistle stops play. 32nd again. You get a quarterback change, you know, they just can't quite the keep track of the 30 seconds. 15 offense, second down. They blame the quarterback, and sometimes it comes from the sideline where they're late coming in. You know, the Cardinals have Ron Monaco, number 59, as a linebacker in place of E.J. Jr. His brother, Rob Monaco, used to be with the team. He was working out in the weight room. His brother was with him. Larry Wilson, the director of player personnel, gave Ron a tryout. Ron made the team. Rob became ill, had an operation, and he was put on waivers. And so Monaco gets a chance to play. And the peculiar part of it was that Ron Monaco never started a game in college. No, he did. He had like six tackles in college before he became a professional. Cribs carries again. 
And has said it really bothered him. He thought he was good enough to start, but he never did. So he's getting some playing time, and that'll help the club when Junior comes back probably next week against New Orleans. Yeah, that's right. It always helps to give the, the second team guys an opportunity to play. And you hate to even say second team. San Diego beat Denver. Upset. Big upset. Nine to three. Morosky to the air. And Clark caught it. And that's very close to a first down as Cedric Mack rode him down. While we have a moment, let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Jack, we've had a major upset in Denver. The Broncos could not pull it out. John Elway with three interceptions on the day. This one with time running out by Vincy Glenn. And San Diego beats the Broncos 9-3. to three. The Jets now have the best record in the AFC. Let's go back to Jack Buck. There's Morosky just into the game, and he is down. By the way, let's watch the play. Here he is going to cr Clark. You'll see him from the left part of your screen on the crossing pattern. Just as he releases it, he gets hit, Freddie picked Jones up, on. and buried. And uh, Jeff Kemp, the other quarterback, is just getting over a bad hip, and it looks like Montana has to come back in. And warm back up real quick. Thought he was done for the afternoon. Well, that's some story with the Broncos. They're now 8-2. and two. Kansas City won their game today. So they're 7-3. and three. And the Raiders were winning when we last looked. That's only the second victory of the year for San Diego. That's right. Well, Morosky is up and walking off. Well, you know, you get hit like that and you get the wind knocked out of you. Just feel like every piece of oxygen that's in your body is evaporating. And you just can't breathe. Glad to see he's up and all right. Got to come out for at least one play when the physicians go out and attend to you. That's an on call. A little on call. <laughs> Montana back in there. The ball at the 23, a first down. Be something if he threw again, wouldn't it? That's been in motion and a delay to Cribs. Slowed down by Monaco and then tackled at the 15, and he got about eight. Carl Carter finished it off, and Cribs has rushed for more than 100 yards. Big day for him, the former Buffalo star. Also played at Birmingham. And here comes Morosky back in. And Montana out. I don't think he'll put his jacket on and take his helmet off where he can't find it now. Eric Harmon is the second running back, number 24. Rathman running. Knocked down by Leonard Smith. Smith, a very strong performer, a good player, smart, good tackler. Let's talk about that American Conference Western Division. What well, with Denver losing today, the Raiders are ahead in a tenuous game against Dallas by four in the fourth quarter. San Diego upset Denver. And the standings. The Raiders could use a win, couldn't they? Put them right back in it. Tough day for Seattle to lose, which they did. Yeah, they did. They're just, uh, that's a football team started out real strong and then just has tapered off. They've had a lot of inconsistency in their quarterback position and not been able to score a lot of points. And if you can't score points, you can't win. Well, first down at the Cardinal 13. Flag is down. Rathman got quite a few yards before Leonard Smith and Carl Carter brought him down. Flag went down real quick, so it's probably going to be an illegal formation. Somebody lining up wrong. Be against the 49ers. Illegal formation. Six men on the line on offense. First down. The AFC Central today. Houston with a win really uh, tangled things up. They defeated Cincinnati, 32-28. And Buffalo defeated Pittsburgh. And Cleveland has the night game on Monday against Miami. So with a win, they could tie Cincinnati.
Bernie Kozar seems to be really settling in on his own in Cleveland. He's uh, just gotten better and better and better. First and 15 at the 18. And they stay on the ground, and the Cardinals expected them to, and it's a pickup of two or three. As Rathman ran with the ball again. That'll take us to the two-minute warning, and neither club wants to stop the clock. Cardinals had 10 points in the first half, were blanked in the third quarter, and with J.T. Smith getting his second touchdown pass, they got their 17th point. Next week in the National Football League, pretty moon uh, overhead. In the NFC East today, Washington beat Green Bay, and they were behind for a while. Raiders are leading Dallas, and the Giants are beating the Eagles. Checking the standings, Washington is now 8-2. The Giants could tie him with a victory. And Dallas had better do something or they're going to fall a couple of games behind. And the Cardinals will be 2-8 and eight after today. Two minutes left. Harmon and Rathman in the backfield. Harmon running with the ball inside the 10. And the Western Division is going to look like this. San Francisco winning here today. The Rams losing at New Orleans. It'll be a half game out. The 49ers a half game behind the Rams. Atlanta, New Orleans very much in the picture. Atlanta's got a real task next week. They take on the Chicago Bears down in Atlanta. And despite this score, it won't be easy for New Orleans at St. Louis. And a fumble by Rathman, and he recovered the ball as her. Derek Harmon uh, missed handoff between Marasco and Harmon. Look at the schedule the 49ers have the rest of the year. They got Washington on Monday night in Washington, Atlanta, New York, Jets. They get actually it's good that they're getting everybody back home. They in talking to them, they feel good about playing everybody at home. They only have two road games left in New England, and of course the Rams the last game of the season. Some pretty impressive records that they have to play coming down the road. Jets have the best record of all after winning today. All of those were before today's games, but all of those records, but they'll be tough teams. Here's a fourth down play, and the 49ers just going to run the ball. Rather throw it, I mean, move from screen. And Francis can't get the touchdown. Stops the clock with 27 seconds left. Well, they kept him in bounds. So we're down to 20 seconds, and apparently the game is going to end. Now they stop it as they measure. All of this is academic, Mr. Theismann. It certainly is, Mr. Buck. You know, you might ask why, why are they going to throw on fourth down? Well, if they run a play and they don't get the first down, the clock automatically stops. Yeah. St. Louis gets the ball. So what they try to do is throw it far enough that they get the touchdown. Well, they got fine. a first down. Now they start the clock, and now the game is over. And 43 to 17 is our final score. And the 49er fans loved it. And the Cardinals are now 2 and 8. And we'll be back here to wrap things up. 43-17, 49ers.